Okay, I'm going to show you the Motorola uh, CPS uh, programming software in a little more detail. I'm doing it via TeamViewer. I'll just open it up on this uh, PC. Couldn't get it running on the main PC that I've got the um, video editing software on, which I think is an illustration of uh, just how uh, unuser friendly the Motorola programming software can be. But I've got it running on this machine over here. I've got my radio connected up to the PC, obviously, with a programming lead. So the first thing I'm going to do is, um, in common with the most of the programming software, I'm going to press the read button. And uh, we'll see that the uh, the software will uh, will read the uh, radio programming. You can see it there. With a warning not to disconnect while we're doing that. So there it is. And... Uh, downloads a little bit of information about uh, the radio itself, a model number, serial number and so on. The frequency range you can see this is a 403 to 470 megahertz radio and is capable of between 1 and 30 watts uh, a power output. Okay so there's various um, features down uh, here. Unfortunately you can't see my uh, mouse pointer because uh, it's on the other machine, so if I just come over here, and you can see, there we are, that's better. So, between 1 and 30 watts, that's interesting, I actually thought it was 25 watts, but uh, there you go. Okay, um, open up the general settings here. Just come over here. Okay, and, right, we can see... Radio name Motorola. I don't know what this. You could, you could presumably alter that, but since the radio has no display other than um, two numerals, is little point. Radio ID is very important here. Um, that's going to be our DMR ID. If you don't put that in, nothing's going to work basically. Um, private calls. I've got that ticked. I'm assuming that. If you didn't check or tick that box, then you wouldn't be able to make private calls. I have that enabled because I want to use the, the Parrot, the Echo test facility on DMR, and that's a private call. So I use that from time to time to check my audio and so on. So I've got that ticked. rest of the stuff is just um, at a default level. Um, you can set the high and low power. I've set low power to one watt, and all of my channels, uh, you will see in a moment, are set to low power because my radio just transmits into a dummy load and works through my um, my hotspot. <coughs> so um, I don't need to run any power. High power set in there, twenty-seven point five. Well, I don't. I don't need that. As you see in a minute, everything's uh, everything's set to low power. So I'll open up the channels dialog here. I will just take a look at one sample channel here. This is uh, 2350, the UK calling channel. Um, you'll see at the uh, the top, uh, I haven't got a scan list, top box. If you wanted to scan, these radios will scan. I don't need it to scan, so there's no scan list there. Uh, the time slot, colour code and time slot, uh, just like uh, any other DMR radio, have to be set here and here. Um, and then if we come down a little, you can see the rest of the programming. Um, <clears throat> we could have the channel set as receive only. We've got a receive frequency, a transmit frequency, a power level setting, uh, and a, a contact name. So we have to, each channel needs to be associated with a contact so that we can, uh, we can actually get into a particular talk group. Rest of the settings, um, I don't touch. And uh, you'll see up here we have a list of contacts. Um, 2350, for example. We just have the call ID, the, the talk group number. And um, that's fairly simple to program up. And for each channel, you not only need a contact, but you will need uh, to have a receive group list allocated to it. I have just one. 
and you'll see all of the channels in my radio are programmed into the uh, receive group list so that whatever channel my radio happens to be switched to I will be able to uh, to receive the call now uh, you'll notice at the top you've got your menu um, under the device setting we've got read write and clone as we'd expect update which I think you can update the firmware but there's a recover button there or a recover menu item when I bought my radio I plugged it in I turned it on it powered up it transmitted it received presumably but I could not read or write to it it was password protected it was locked and the only way that I could get my radio to work was to uh, reflash the firmware. I managed to get hold of some uh, up-to-date firmware and using this recover facility okay I was able to reflash the radio and then from that point on I could read and write from it in the normal way. Um, in order to do this you must uh, download firmware that's either newer or the equivalent of the firmware that's in your radio and then you'll be able to do this but it's uh, worth remembering if you have got a password protected radio there is a way out but you'll have to get the uh, the firmware download anyway I hope that was uh, interesting as a little look at the Motorola uh, software very basic but this is a basic radio as I've uh, pointed out in my first video I'm going to use a few channels so it didn't take too long to program it up um, obviously if you've got one that's got um, a full display on it like the 3600 and you're using it mobile or you're using it with a repeater you'll have to do a little bit more programming than I have but nevertheless they're, uh, they're useful radios for what they are but uh, they're not as versatile as uh, the equipment that's actually aimed at the amateur market anyway thank you for watching and I'll see you in the uh, in the next video Thank you.